Hey guys, this week we're going to take a look at how we can add custom fields to Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations. And you're probably saying, you know, big deal, we do that all the time. But what we're going to do is going to show you how to do it without using Visual Studio. So normally you have to have a programmer, they use, go into Visual Studio, add the uh, field to the, to the system, et cetera, et cetera. So what we're going to do today is we're going to do a no-code method of adding custom fields to Dynamics. All right. So a couple caveats to this method. Um, First off is you're limited to the number of fields. I think it's less than 50. It's between 25 and 50. Sorry, I don't know the exact number, but um, uh, you, you are limited to the number of fields you can create. And that is by table though. So you're gonna see in here, I'm gonna create these on the customer table, but you, you can have that many on the product table, et cetera. These are available on most tables. I won't say all, I don't, I'm pretty sure they're not on all tables, but there are on a lot of the commonly used, at least master tables that I've seen. The other little caveat to this is that these fields can't be used with X++ code or, or in code, right? So if you plan on using these fields for some business logic or whatever, you won't be able to use it. You will, will need to use the, the traditional method of adding these through uh, Visual Studio and actually adding them into the system, okay? So in other words, just to say, say I mean, these are good for holding data. If there's extra fields that you wanna get, you know, collect on the customer, for example, um, this is a perfect solution for it, but you can't really do it, you know, base any business logic off of it. Also, when you add these fields, they are available in the grids. You know, for example, they're available on the screens. You can, you know, you can use them in nor like you would any other field in the system. Okay. So the example we're going to use today is I'm going to just add a field to the customer uh, record uh, called max coverage. This is going to be a maximum insurance coverage uh, for a customer. So let's go hop over to Dynamics and see how that's done. All right, so once we're in here, we're gonna go over to the accounts receivable page and then all customers. And then I'm just gonna open up any customer, doesn't matter which, just to get to the customer form. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a personalization. So if I right click on here and then I'm gonna personalize and then I'm gonna add a field. And you're probably used to seeing this screen where you can select a different field to add. But what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna create a new field here. So this one's easy to miss unless you're looking for it. So let's go ahead and create a new field. And the first thing we have to do is pick the table that we're going to put it into. And for this one, I'm gonna use customers. And then the, we need to give it a name. So I'm gonna call it uh, max coverage. And notice here in the field name, it's gonna to, going to call the field, the whatever you called it, underscore custom. And then we have to tell what type of field it is, whether it's a text or a number, date, string, et cetera. Um, so we'll, we'll, this is going to be a, a number, so we're going to use decimal. And then the label, what we want the field to be labeled, we're going to call it max coverage. All right, and then what we'll do is we'll put in some help text. Uh, this field is the maximum insurance coverage for the customer. All right, add that. And we can, you know, at this point we can do save and new, save, you know, if we're going to add multiple, we can do save and new, but I'm just going to go ahead and save. And it's going to tell me that I'm just going to add a, it's going to modify the customer table. It's going to add a field called max coverage underscore custom. Are you sure? We can go ahead and say yes. And there we've added to our list. Now we still need, we can't hit cancel here because we haven't created our personalization yet. So we're going to go ahead and do an insert. And then here it is. So now like any other um, personalization, whenever you add a personalization to the screen, you really need to refresh it so you can see it. So right now you can see it's grayed out, but uh, what we'll do is we'll, uh, we're gonna refresh the screen here and that'll pull us back to the grid view. And let's go back into that customer here, Cave Wholesales. And there we have the field that's not grayed out anymore. So now we should be able to hit edit and we can put in a value. Okay, we'll put in 100,000, then we'll save it. And then let's, we'll just get out of it and go back into it just to show you that it is actually saving the, the uh, coverage amount, okay? Now, if another user wants to add that to their uh, screen, all they have to do is right-click Personalize, uh, Add a Field, and then they should see that field in their list of fields now, right? So we've got match coverage there. Now, you can also uh, push these personalizations out. This beyond the scope of this particular video, but uh, just uh, Google... Um, personalizations and dynamics, and you'll see that there's some screens in the system that have been that you can actually push these out to, to users, okay? Now the next step, what we're gonna do, the second part of this is we want to be able to add this into an entity. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this uh, field 
into our customer v3 entity okay now the screen i'm going to show you here is under system admin this is also where you can add or do some editing on the field as well so let's go ahead and take a look at that next so if we go underneath system administration so we go to system administration and then underneath setup there's a, a menu called custom fields and then so if we do the drop down here we select the table now there's only the customer table is showing up in here and that's because that's the only table that we've added any custom fields to so don't see this and think that you can only add fields to the custom ta customer table if we added another one to the product table for example you would see product into there so it's just going to show the tables where you actually have custom fields set up in okay so what we're going to do is we're going to click on that and hit select and now this is going to list any fields that we have here in this customer table and the only one we really have is called max coverage all right so as far as editing the field we can change the label we can change the help text what we can't change is the type or the name okay so basically if you've pick the wrong type in the field, you're gonna to have to delete it and start over. Um, but um, but that's, you just, you just can't change that, okay? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on entities and I wanna add this to the customer V3 entity. So I get a list of entities here I can add this to. Uh, so I'm gonna select customer V3 and I'm gonna hit save, okay? Now this is something that messes me up on every time I do this, okay? So if, if, I, do this, if I do this tomorrow, I'll forget to do it. But on this screen, there's an apply changes button and you have to hit the apply changes anytime you make any change. And I mean, even if you decide to delete this field, you can delete the field. If you don't hit apply changes, it doesn't take effect. Okay, so it's, it, I forget every time, don't be like me trying to remember to do it. But if it's not working, just come back here. If, if you made a change and it's not working, just come back here and look and do whatever you did again and make sure and hit the apply changes. and. <laughs> you'll probably be okay. So I'm going to hit apply changes here and that's going to uh, basically update my entity. All right. Now, as far as the directions on, on Microsoft Docs is concerned, I, that's the last, at least that's the way I read it, that's the last thing you should have to do, but I actually have not been able to get it to show in the entity unless I do this next step, okay? So right now, if I go into the entity, I'm probably not going to see max coverage anywhere, so we can kind of go and look at that. So I'm going to go into my uh, workspaces here, and then we're going to go to uh, data management and go, go into the entities list here, the data entities. And then if I just look for customer V3, or let's see, what's it called? Customer. Let's just do search for customer, and we'll just find it. There we go. Customers V3. No, it's customers. If we go to customers V3, and I look, uh, let's just look at the target mapping here. All right, so let's scroll down here. Let's see, scroll, 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 scroll. Oh, and it did show up here. So this must be something that they've changed. If it doesn't show, I have actually seen where this doesn't show. So if, if your field doesn't show for whatever reason, click on Generate Mapping and Generate from New. So when we click on Generate, it's gonna ask us if we wanna generate mapping from scratch. Go ahead and say yes, and that's that's actually gonna, that'll generate the the regenerate the mapping on on the entity there okay so again i've seen it it's funny sometimes i've seen it show up sometimes i have it so it's kind of a, a crapshoot i don't think i'm doing anything differently but uh if just know if you don't see it and the way to fix that is just to click on that generate mapping and you should see it at that point and, and be able to uh import and export out of that entity okay all right, so I hope you found some value in this. It's a handy way to quickly add some fields if, you, if you've if you got you know a customer that wants to just add their own fields and, and put some data in those fields. It's a great way to do it. Now, incidentally, if you do happen to add a field, I mentioned at the beginning, you know, you can't use these programmatically, you know, in X++ code. But if you happen to decide, okay, I've created a field and maybe it's been running for six months and now you, you want to um, add a field through... Uh, Visual Studio that you can that you can need to base some business logic off of. What what I would do is I would just export the data out of that field using your entity, create your field, and then re-import that data into the new field, and then you should be good to go on it. So I don't think it's that big a deal that you can't use these programmatically. It's not like you can't get the data out because you can't add this to an entity. Okay, so just just a quick thing, you know, I, I have people ask me about that because it is kind of concerning that you you can't see those fields in, in Visual Studio. So then if you start uh, adding data uh, and you want to change that later, uh, you may have some issues, but you really don't. You just export the data out and then import it back in. 
okay? All right, so I hope you found some value in this. Hope you hope you can use this to add some fields to your system uh, without doing any big customizations. Uh, if you did, please give it a little thumbs up. That just helps me on the distribution of the video. And I put out a video about once a week. Uh, so if you, if you want to get notified when I put out a new video, just hit the subscribe button below um, and YouTube will notify you when I put out a new video. Okay, so until next time, thanks for watching. I'll see you later. Bye.